Welcome to class number two and or class number four, because it was yeah, complicated. Um, the 130 class, much different than the one o'clock class in St. Louis. Um, this is a class for players 1400 and over. Someday we'll get somebody who meets that criteria. Are you USCF rated? Are you USCF rated? No. Are you, you're USCF, you're not? I, well, probably. Probably. <laughs> but it's been, it's been a while since I've looked. What was your peak rating? I, not very high. Yeah, so that's a good class. Okay, and unlike the previous class, there's adults. Yay, now it can be X-rated. Prognananda, okay. So the lecture today will be about Prognananda. What's his first name? Or maybe that is his first name. What's his other name? Sarin. Sarin? Sarin's the other person. What's the other guy? Nihal Sarin is another guy. Okay. Yeah, he's probably better than Prognananda. Ramachandran or something? It's like Ramesh Babu. Uh, Ramesh Babu. Probably. Is it? It's something like that. Yeah, so it is Ramesh Babu. Is it? Nobody knows. Even Prognan. And also, if you go to the internet and you watch his games live, it says PR. So you see everybody's name, then you see PR, because they can't put any of their names up there. They're playing against a wonder. Yeah. Yeah, they, they put a wonder, but they put R. Okay, <clears throat> so um, I wanted to show two of his games. They're very long. And I noticed something which is troubling, and I didn't know it before I, I made the lecture up. And that is, I wanted to find games Prognananta beat really strong players, and then I couldn't. And I looked at all of his games. So when he's playing people under 2,300, he's really good. And when he's playing people over 2,600, he's not. I mean, not yet, yeah, he's 12, but maybe 13. He's 13, he's finished. Okay, Nihal Saren, in my opinion, is a better player. I don't know if he'll become a better, I don't know, but I think he has a better style too. Pragnananda is a very unusual player. He plays like Karpa, very boring, slow, positional, unusual for a 12 year old, okay. And Pragnanan has been well known in the chess world for a long time, even though he's 12. That's pretty good. And he's higher rated than I am. And I have a couple of games I want to show. This is the one with a wonder. And they're both very long. That's why there's only two games. Usually I show 10 games. But. Okay. This was played in the World Junior in Italy last year. Um, and who won the World Junior? It was, what's his name won? Ari Ta T Tari, Arian Terry? Tari. Right. He's from Norway, and he has an Iranian name. He's Iranian. And I knew when I was born, one of the first things I said to my parents when I could speak was, yeah, chess. I think the world champion, world champion they'll be Norwegian. That's, that's what I was saying. Yeah. That's the least likely thing that's ever happened. The world chess champion and the world junior champion are Norwegian. That'll never happen again, ever, because there's no other good juniors in Norway. That's, that's it. He's not really Norwegian, but there you go. Okay, and I've known Tari for a long time also because I coach at the World Youth and he's one of the guys we're scared of every year. He's like, okay, Tari, because I teach the top, I coach the top American kids, we know who the other top kids are. So we like know Pragnananda, we know Tari, we know all those guys. Okay, so this is his game with the Wonder. Now, of course, Pragnananda is playing like in the World Under 12, in the World Under 10, the World Under 14, this is Under 21, so he's still competing for first. So. Um, he plays the latest thing. It used to be everybody played bishop b5. Now they all play bishop c4. You have the same kind of positions. So, And in the 1800s, everybody played d4 here, as in the famous game, the only game you guys know, with d4. No? Uh, uh, can you do it? I can, I can show the game while you're thinking. But I know this game. Right? Let's see, um, if, let's see if he can say it. I'm trying to remember the player. You can do it. You guys remember yet? No? You guys have memorized this game? I thought you did. Oh, this isn't the one. I this isn't the game you're thinking of? No. You sure? No. <clears throat> one of these games. You guys don't know this game? This is the most famous game with D4. Um, F6, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, now Rook C1 is a mistake and C6 is a mistake. The only two mistakes of the game. Yeah. X clam. Nobody, nobody can tell me this game yet. Unbelievable. What a class. You'll recognize it in a second. Um, what do you play here? He played, played G6. Yeah, G6. <clears throat> okay, what did Black play here? He's in check and his queen's hanging. This is 1400 and over, come on. King E5, King E8. King, King E8, yeah, okay. And this is a very famous sequence. In this position, to the surprise of all three of you, 
Black played a move that you will not suggest. <laughs> what did Black play here? You will not suggest it. So think of a move you wouldn't suggest, and that's the answer. That's the first move you would play. Yeah, you're going to go. Well, that's it's going to be, it's gonna be a king. Gonna get yeah, it's, it's here. It's yeah. That's the one that was not King F8? Yeah, that's the best move. So you see how Black's threatening made on C1? Yeah, so, and, and, you're, and you're, all four pieces are hanging. All of White's pieces are hanging. So this is how the game ended. And then Black got up and left, and left the tournament hall and went to wherever he was staying, I guess. He didn't say I resigned, he just left. Okay, and the game, he resigning. The game would have concluded like this if he had not left. There, it could, have, it could have also concluded here, 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 here. You guys memorized all that analysis, right? Sure. Okay, good. And you guys don't know what game that was? Really? That's Steinitz von Bartleben. From which tournament? London. Well, you got the right country. Yeah. Hastings, 1895. Yeah, and who won that tournament? Nope. Who's American? Still don't know. Who? Not Marshall. No, that's a good answer, but not Marshall. Right. Not Marshall's correct. <laughs> I'll give you a hint, which the kids don't get. He takes the cake. The adults don't get it either. Pillsbury. Harry Nelson Pillsbury. They're like, who's that? Oh, I never heard of Pillsbury. When Hastings 1895. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the most famous game in that line. Nowadays, in this position, Grandmasters don't play D5, they take here. Although, this isn't played in Grandmaster play anymore. Okay, so white played D3, that's what everybody plays. Then you just move around in circles until your opponent falls asleep. And what's funny is that basically Bishop C4 and Bishop B5 are the same now. Because when you play Bishop B5 and you play a regular Rui Lopez, you play Bishop A4, sometimes Bishop B3, sometimes Bishop C2. Here you just play Bishop B3, Bishop C2 in one step. You don't have to go around. And you get the very similar kind of positions. The difference is, and the reason why this is popular now, as opposed to the Rui Lopez, is people are avoiding the Berlin. Because the Berlin, they're like, ah, black's fine. Okay, D6. And I don't want to put you to sleep. But I'll give you some of the niceties, because there's a class. So in general, you don't want to lose this bishop. And the way to lose it is the guy plays knight a5 and takes it. And if you play knight a5, whoa, if you play knight a5 now, your e pawn is not defended sufficiently. So normally when black plays d6, his intention is to play knight a5 and get your bishop. So you play bishop b3, that way your bishop can go to c2 and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, and then nothing happens forever, it's just super boring. And in this position, it seems like black already has an issue. And actually, in all kinds of double king pawn openings, this happens to be when I'm black and Rui Lopez, my bishop goes to b6. And the reason is, unlike everybody else's bishops, in the Rui Lopez, when I'm black, I play knight f6 and bishop c5, which is pretty rare. And so this issue that a wonder had this game, I've had that issue. The issue is your bishop's on b6, and the guy plays knight c4 and a4. Then you're like, uh, ah. In this opening, where you play bishop c5, and this happens, it's very common that black plays a very early a6. And that way, your bishop always has a7. You don't have to worry about what happened in the game. Okay? And a wonder, obviously, is like 15 years old, so he doesn't have 40 years of experience in double king pawn openings. So... Like probably around here, um, already this isn't good. So maybe even here, well, if you play a6 here, I could take and play queen b3, but you can play queen c8. So right around here is where Wonder gets the worst position. He takes, he plays bishop b6. And normally what, when you're moving your bishop, not voluntarily or voluntarily, you're, you're worried about b4 and a4, but white can't play b4 here. So, Maybe like bishop b6 is a baby. Maybe you should play rook b8 or queen c. They can't play queen c8. Moves to his king side. Maybe rook b8 is a better move. Because it seems like after knight c4, I'm not really worried about you taking this. So just take back. I'm worried about a4, a5. Mm -hmm. And if I play a6 or a5, I destroy my pawn structure. Because that's the thing with the c pawn. 
So it seems around here went from like equal to much worse. And what's different about this than normal positions is white didn't castle. So black sort of down a tempo. White's castled and black plays like a6 and bishop a7. But white didn't castle, he started doing stuff first. Okay, and now after a4, I don't know what to do with black. Because it looks really boring, but now I like white as a threat. I mean, a5 is serious. Queen takes b7, scary. So here, he, he played knight d8. And I'm guessing after a5, he can play bishop c5 because the knight's defending the pawn. And then, even though the bishop is trapped here, um, you can't play d4 because your king's on e1. So for example, if I try to win your bishop, then this is an unfortunate queen takes e4 check is coming in the deep, yeah. So the tactics don't work, which means if black gets a free move, black can play a6 and his bishop is safe forever. And you guys are probably wondering, well, knight d is stupid, he's defending the b-pawn, that's a stupid square for the knight. However, once the d-pawn is defended, probably with c6, probably, then I could play knight e6, and then it's great on e6. So a wonder is pretty good too, right? Now, this is not a joke, it's not. And you guys probably don't know the answer, and you'll think it's a joke when I tell you. It's not. Do you know a wonder's brother's name? This isn't a joke. Do you know? A marvel. It's close. You're very close. Yeah, you're close. So uh, his brother is probably somewhere between 1700 and 1900 rated, but he's not, so not famous. A dream. <laughs> a, a dream? A dream and a wonder. <laughs> That's it. You can't make that up. <laughs> A Marvel, that's, his dad's like, dang, didn't think of that. Another There's another kid, I think, who has a normal name. There's a, a brother, brother, but he just has Why a would you have Brian. a normal name? I'm not, I, that makes now, sense. if I remember correctly, and you're older than me, so you might know, didn't Larry Holmes name all of his, Larry, name all his kids Larry, right? George. George Foreman named all his kids George, George. including his daughter. <laughs> yeah, I think, she, so. I think she's also George. Yeah, the yeah it's not, not, not Foreman, uh, yeah. yeah, George, George Foreman. Foreman. Yeah. George Foreman was on one of my favorite TV shows. You didn't see that coming. Sanford and Son. And he played George Foreman. So there was an acting thing, and he wanted to get into it. So they, he went there as like an actor's, you know, people who can't act. And, and, and then uh, Red Fox became the director, because the director quit because he hated Red Fox. And there's a scene where George Foreman gets mad, and he's supposed to, like, punch. But he just does it really half-heartedly. And, and Red Fox is like, you, you got to punch. He punches the wall and he breaks his hand. And so he can't fight and he's mad at Red Fox. That, that was George Foreman's greatest acting. Okay, so knight, okay, so knight d8, he castles. Now maybe I can play a5 and d4 because you don't have queen takes e4 check. See, this is queen takes e4. Can't do it. Okay, h6, getting rid of the pin, or so he thought. And now, this I don't understand. I, I'm an old man. So he played the move c6, which means I guess he's losing because c6 just loses a pawn. There's like nothing, there's nothing to say. So I'm gonna turn the engine on because I'm confused. Okay, so he's just losing. Wow, he's losing on move 13 with what, with black, yeah. So this is amazing, he couldn't deal with knight c4, a4. So back to the drawing board, he'll look at the opening with his coach, then he'll play more accurately next time. Yeah. So it's funny, these positions look really boring and methodical and nothing ever happens. And that's because guys like Kramnik and Caruana and Anand are playing perfectly and not letting this happen. And then people like us are like, wait, knight c4, a4, what do I do? Yeah. And I think if you play a6 early, you can always play bishop a7. And in fact, if you ever see a grandmaster game and black plays a6 with for no reason, like white didn't play b4, you're know, like, why do you do that? He could have his bishop on c5. Well. It's safer there. Okay, so now he's just down a pawn. So there's nothing going, he's down a pawn for nothing. Okay, now it's time to convert. Okay, and white defends his A pawn, and white has an extra pawn on the queen side, so that's where he's gonna try to win. And unfortunately for a wonder, he didn't make it interesting, he sort of kept it boring. Not too good. Knife F5, good move. Still up a pawn. Still up a pawn, and he plays this move. So I think 
the black has an issue here. Like this is obviously a threat. And he defended it this way. Must have been thinking if he takes this, I can take this. Something like that. But after here, he just lost his B-pawn. So that was very strange. So I'm wondering if that was also a mistake or it was already too late. B5, knight C7, knight. Wow, that's too complicated. I need an adult. Wow. So he's dead lost unless he goes here and has to see this variation. Knight takes B4, knight takes A6, knight takes A2. Now this is the only move that gives an advantage. That's hard to believe. Knight C7 doesn't give an advantage? Oh, because it takes A4. Knight B4. And white may or may not win. I would bet he may win, because I like that extra pass pawn. Yeah. So that's what black had to do. And instead, obviously he's in time trouble. It's move 32. So he played this move. And I, I was confused by that move. And the computer says I'm correct to be confused. That's another bad move. Yeah. Well, B5 looks so bad. Yeah, B, yeah but th this looks really bad to me. It's like he didn't see rook A3. He saw like knight b6 and the b4 pawns hanging. Now you have to move your knight and then can't, you can't do that. Right. Now, this game confused me and I think it confused me because I'm right. I don't think it confused me because I'm wrong. So if I'm white here, I'm waiting for my opponent to resign. And when the game was played out, it was very close to a draw later. So I think I'm not confused. I think probably not as technique as that of a 12 year old, not of an old man like me. So... Yeah, this is this gotta be like plus four. Like it has to be. Come on, go up. There you go. Good computer. Yeah, this has to be like ridiculously winning. And I didn't use an engine this game when I prepared it for the lecture, but I'm guessing he was like plus one later. So I don't his technique was very suspicious. Okay, so so far I'm happy. Pretty happy so far. Yeah, this is fine. Getting luffed, that's good. That's good. And then he played knight c4, which the computer says is good. I'm just wondering what he did wrong, because he was close to not winning later. And he's so winning here. Wow. Look at, the, look at these numbers. Hmm. Ah, he played b7. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so actually white played perfect every move here, and now he blundered. Okay, so here, you would like to play b7, b8. If you play b7, obviously black plays knight c6. And then that's what happened. And then he queen and then rook and knight. And to be honest with you, I don't know if that's winning. Probably, but maybe not. However, if your opponent wants to play knight c6, you should not let him play knight c6. So what should white have played here? Stopping knight c6. I guarantee it stops it. I wouldn't lie to you. Yeah, 90, tough class. 95? 95, yeah. But then I go B7, B8. Yeah, he just didn't play 95. Yeah. So if you don't want me to queen, I'm guessing you have to play Rook A8. Any other suggestions? I don't see anything else. And then I go here and play 97. So that seems just really easy. Yeah. So now move 45, he shouldn't be in time trouble, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's no second time control. Yeah, 95 plus a billion. He played B7. He did play B7. Yeah. So the computer's funny. It goes to a rook. Okay. So B7 is just like a horrible move. Yeah. And now he has to win this endgame, which... Now, when I was growing up as a kid, one of my favorite books was San Antonio 72. It was a tournament in San Antonio. Very strong. Karpov, Portish, Mecking, Brown, Petrosian, Kerez. Pretty strong for America. And one of the games ended in Rook Knight and 2 versus Rook and 3, and it was a draw. I don't know which game it was, but I remember that. So this might be a win, but it might not be. But with two connected, I mean, it should have just been really easy. And it was really easy. He missed 95. So if I ever see either one of them, I'll see him eventually. I'll say, hey, w was there time trouble in this game? I'm 45? Or, like, you know, you're crazy, right? <laughs> I mean... You, you can't play b7, knight c6 when like 95 wins immediately. It could be 
he saw knight c6 and thought he had something that he didn't. Like, oh, I can't, okay, I gotta play b8. So he won this, but it was, I mean, the technique was, you know, not easy to win this. There's no pawns on the board. Rook and knight versus rook is a pretty easy draw. Much easier than rook and bishop, much easier. So he can't afford to lose his pawns. He's gotta keep his pawns. Having said that, he gave all his pawns away. But. In this kind of position, would you wanna to simplify to take the rooks off? The white or black? Yeah, white. Um, yes. With better. rooks off, should be pretty easy win. Should be, yeah. Because the way to win this is to get my king and crush your king, which is what he did. But if there's no rooks, that's easy. If there's rooks, how am I, what am I supposed to do? Move my king into your rook? I mean, so it's not easy, yeah. Yeah, so he just, finally he played g4. He was wary of moving his pawns forward, because if they get traded, that's not good. And he's like, all right, I guess we got to move him forward. Yeah, this is like really difficult to win. Yeah, and then I'm assuming what a wonder did was wrong. He moved his rook over to attack those pawns. Yeah, now here, white hasn't made a lot of progress here. Like the last 20 moves have been sort of boring. And now a wonder did something that, that changed the position completely and it ended up losing. So probably this was his losing move. So I'm wondering what the engine says. Like if I just chill in my drawing. Rookie one check. Oh wow, he has this tactical trick. So this says if he just chills, it's like close to win or a draw. But then he has this tactical trick that draws. So king d4, obviously. Yeah, king f4, g5. You have to take and play king f5. And then I go here and you can't take my pawn because of f6 check. That's that's a dead draw. That's a dead draw. And then after here, f5 check is brilliant. What a move. That trades the pawns because I have rook f4 check. And I take your pawn. That's just a draw. Yeah. So actually this is a draw. I didn't it was just an immediate draw. Wait, can he can he try to win with, with king d4? Can he try? F6. You can't play knight g6 because you lose. Rook d1 check. Otherwise the knight d3 blocks the rook. So he has to play, oh, now after knight d3, I go take all your pawns. I just take all of them. Yeah. So he did that in the game, except he lost. So actually, this was, this was a draw, right, where he made the move I thought was bad. I was right. I just didn't know how right I was. I thought, well, that, that loses. He probably should have done something else. So he played rook h1, and he just missed these drawing ideas. Probably the game's like five and a half hours old. They probably have no time on their clock. If it was like move 10 and they had two hours, he would have played rookie one check and drawn. And then he took this, and he probably thought, okay, the pawns are off the board, I'm going to draw. But the problem is, he thought this was an easy draw because you get all the pawns off the board. And that's why he didn't play h5 here, because I saved my pawn. And now this is winning, for sure. Plus, plus seven is my guess. Random guess. Go Stockfish 9. Notice the 9. I got it last week. <clears throat> Okay, not plus seven, but only plus seven in like five minutes. Also, two CPUs insulting the audience. Yeah, he was like, what? I could put it on four, but it would take seconds. Around 24 in my office. 24 CPU? Yeah, 24 cores. Yeah, but my, my computer, oh, I guess not. You have Stockfish 9? More than Stockfish 9. I pulled the Git repo and built it myself. Solid. Also, what? I'll, I'll tell you about that. So your engine could be Alpha Zero now? No. You sure? Maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, is, your, is your thing better than the Stockfish that was playing Alpha Zero? Yeah. Like, you're very confident. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but my plus seven's right, as you can tell. It's going to be plus seven. Okay, so he's like, G5, H5, draw. He's like, yes. Unfortunately, there's something else in chess that matters. Your king. So it's a draw, except now, when white puts his king and knight up there, there's no rook checks getting them away. So if I took these three pawns off the board, that would be a draw. But actually, the black pawns hurt because you take all the checks away. So that's unfortunate. Rawr! Yeah, that's too bad. Now we're threading mate, obviously. Rook d8. So he goes here. And now, this is very funny. This is apropos of, you know, nothing is... What's your name would say? What's your name? Man, I know her name. The one who married what's his name? Uh, she's that terrible singer. Oh, nothing. Lance Armstrong's ex-wife. Oh, Cheryl Crook. There you go. Yeah. All I want to do... Okay. 
So it's apropos of nothing. You know, now you know the one. No? Okay. So remember before Prognananta should have played knight e5, stopping knight c6? And now he gets to do it again. He wants to play rook d8 check, but king e7. So he stopped king e7. Knight c6. Knight c6. See, he learned. If only he had done that before. That's too bad. It's funny. If these pawns were in here, I'm relatively confident. Oh, wait, I take back what I was going to say. Oh, it is a draw because I check here. I want to play rook e4. So if you went here, I could block. But actually, after rook e4, I have rook f7 check. Oh, yeah, the king e8 draws. Yeah. So these pawns were in here. Like rookie H, rookie, everything draws. But this, ah, stupid pawn. Now it's hard to stop mate. It's really hard. He stopped it though. He resigned. He resigned. Yeah. That's funny that he stopped king, he didn't play knight e5, he played knight c6. Yeah. So that was an up and down game you would expect from juniors. And I'm assuming time trouble played a role. But more importantly, uh, Pragnananta, like, virtually strategically winning out of the a really boring opening against a very good player. In my opinion, not shared by everyone, a wonder's better than Pragnan on top. If they played a match, I'd bet on a wonder. Yeah, wonder's really good. However, a wonder is three years older, so. Okay. At the same age, Pragnan on is better, for sure. Yeah. Guaranteed. Now, you guys are watching the Fisher, Fisher? Watching the Carl Sanaka match with the picture of Fisher's grave in the background. Yeah. And I was thinking, People are complaining about that. And I was thinking, well, what happens when those guys die? You know, Naka and Carlson, and then these kids are playing, not these kids, but young, you know, and then like their, their grave is up there. Like I'd be thinking that if I was playing, I'd be like, this isn't good. Like I don't want that to happen. But what, I mean, what's gonna happen? Yeah. Well, that's an event of Carlson random or a Naka random, so. Yeah. You guys know S-Chess? Yeah. Sarawan? Sarawan, yeah. 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 I've watched so it. here's the, I understand the reasoning too. So Yasser understands that the queen moves like a rook and a bishop, because it does. He's like, well, shouldn't there be pieces that move like a bishop and a knight and a rook and a knight? But there aren't, so he made them. And they're called the hawk, and what's the other one? The hawk and the, it has a funny name, not the jester. The hawk and something else. I should know. But anyway, maybe. Oh yeah, I think it is the hawk and the elephant. I think you're right. So those pieces are off the board to start. You play chess. And then when something leaves the back row, let's say you play bishop on f1 to b5, you can put your hawk or elephant on f1. So whenever something leaves the back row, or you, or you cannot, you can not do that. Then that piece moves like a bishop and a knight, or a rook and a knight, depending on which one is which. I don't know which one's which. Probably the elephant's the bishop and knight, because elephant is bishop in Russian. So anyway, there's 960, there's S Chess, there's Bug House. We got, now, there's also Crazy House. Anybody? I play Crazy House. Okay, so this will shock you because you don't play it. There's like a huge money tournament coming up online. Like a lot of money. Crazy, I never heard of a Crazy House tournament, but they're going to play it. Do you know what Bug House is? Cra or, cr crazy I don't House. I don't know how to play. Crazy House is Bug House on one board. So Bug House is two boards. Mm -hmm. You take a piece, give it to your partner. Crazy house is you take a piece and give it to yourself. So if I take your knight, your knight's black and I have the white pieces, I take a white knight and I have that white, and I have an extra white knight. And instead of moving, you can drop the white knight on it. Yeah, you can drop, yeah. So I've, ne I've never played one game of crazy house in my life. I've seen it. I've played a lot of bug house, but not lately. Shogi, right? Shogi's the same as yeah. crazy house. Yeah, and so they're gonna have a crazy house turn with huge prizes. So Cra that's crazy like Fox News. Okay, so Prognananta won. And I told you guys before the lecture that he never beats anybody good, but he did. I was kidding. He beat David Howell, okay? And this was at the Isle of Man last year. Uh, although they let women play, so I don't know. Um, now, was that the tournament, or was that Gibraltar? The one where uh, Carlson had, like, was, got in trouble? It was either Isle of Man or it was, or it was I think it was Isle of Man. He was he went sightseeing before the round and then like there's this thing that drives you around and it like broke. So then like he was gonna get to the round late and then like he somehow made it to the round on time and I think he won. So this is against David Howell, who's one of the top players in Britain, as you can see by his rating. <laughs> Pretty reasonable, right? Yeah. Okay, so it was a Carol Khan. And again, Pragnananda plays the most boring, you know, 
like the most solid. And what's funny is, in the 70s and 80s, in this position, everybody played insane. Whatever the most insane move was. So they played G4, they played Knight C3, and then G4, and then H4, and there were all these games with super grandmasters. Okay, then Nigel Short played Knight F3, Bishop E2, and then like five years later, that's everybody played every game. And now, the theory of Knight C3 and G4 is from the 80s. So if any good player just memorized that, you know, they're supposed to be like, what? That's from the 80s. What, what happened to Knight F3, G, Bishop E2? So it's really weird that people don't go back to stuff that basically wasn't refuted. It's just interesting, right? And there's a lot of GM games with Knight C3 and G4, and now they play H4 in this position and so forth. So, okay, Pragdananda, of course, the most boring, because that's a boring player. Castles. And after C5, this actually will make a lot of sense to the class C4, because C4 is explosive. But the king's on E8 and I castled. So you've got to open the center up MVL style. Okay, and this is actually the point of bishop e2 and knight f3. Obviously, if white plays c3, which is fine, then we basically have an advanced French where black's bishop got out. And so that's why this wasn't popular. Before Nigel Short played knight f3, bishop e2, ignoring the bishop on, f on f5. Before that, they were like, bishop on f5, g4, h4, f4, rawr, as in the game... MV Alacobian, 2012? Yeah, well, I'm going to show you. Could you guys think I'm lying? And you'll be like, wow, you were telling the truth even more than you said you were telling the truth. You won't even believe what MVL did. You'll be like, wait a minute, did you make this game up and put it in the database and you're just tricking us? And then I almost typed MVL. That wouldn't work out very well. And the reason I know this game is I was playing on a Kobian's team. I was at the game. Okay, and it was in your favorite uh, country. Where were me and a Kobian teammates? The UAE. Didn't see that coming. Yeah. Okay, 2012. See? Okay, now to shock the audience. I told you what was going to happen. You didn't believe me. And now it's going to be worse than what I said. Watch what white does. If white moves a piece, let me know. Oh, he moved a piece. Terrible. Oh, he moved a pawn again. Good. Yeah. And then he, the rest of the game, even though he castled kingside, he started moving his kingside pawns. Rawr. Okay. And black was better in this game, according to the computer, and then white got like four queens. So it was a terrible... Yeah, somehow that h-pawn queened and everything queened. Rawr. Okay, and then he resigned here. Plus one million. Yeah. Look, look at the plus. Yeah, Rick C8 check. The truth hurts. Also, Rick C8 mate. If you play queen takes knight. Queen C8 mate. If you like sacking your queen. Man, those numbers are harsh, right? Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so MVL like, pushed all his pawns in one. And that's what they used to do. That was the old way of d combating this opening was... You tried to punish the bishop on f5 because the thought was if white just plays like it's an advanced French, black has a bishop on f5. Okay, and then short's like, nah, it's still good. I'll just win the bishop later with my knight and I'll win. Okay, and one of my favorite games in this line in the advanced French with the knight f is the game Shanklin Nicobian from the US Championship 2014, where white just won positionally because he had two bishops. Okay, so c4, rawr. Knight a3, here comes the knight. Can't stop him. See, I told you, he thought I was lying. And then he stopped him. Now the bishop can take on d6. So, of course, if you play bishop e7, then you forgot to stop him. Then knight d6, and your bishop's pinned. So, so don't do that. f6, also not recommended. I take it, and it's suspicious. So you gotta move your queen. Rook c1. And this is funny because Pragdananda is getting an opening advantage against you know, a much higher rated player. And now Pragdananda has a really boring player, and he played knight e3, which is very tactical. The problem is I, I don't want to move my bishop anymore. I sort of like it on g5. If I go to h4, that gives away the knight f4 square. d2 looks sort of silly. So this takes care of everything tactically. I want to take all of your pieces. And one thing I tell my students you want to move your pieces out, then when you do, the opponent takes them. So, you know, too bad. 
So I would say the war analogy, you're at war with Canada. If you go to Canada, they hit you with a broom, right? If you sit here, you're fine. So if you want to win, you got to move your pieces out, then your opponent takes them. So chess is hard. That's why Howell's always in time trouble. He's the worst. He's like Ray Robson plus. He's higher rated than Ray Robson, so I was right. Howell's in time trouble, like I move one every game. Yeah, Howell takes a long time. Also, Pragananda, as you know, is very short. Because he is. He's a picture on the internet. He's like this tall. And David Howell is very tall. So it's probably a funny pairing watching Pragananda beat him. Okay. Yeah, Howell's probably like 6'2", and Pragananda's like three feet tall or something. There's a funny picture on the web of Pragananda staying next to Anand. Anand looks like a giant. Like he's 10 feet taller. And Anand's like six feet. Not taller than six feet. Okay. So now all the pieces are hanging. So he plays bishop takes e3 because that knight was too good, and they trade everything. And normally I would like black in this position. Um, but yeah, I think white's better because this bishop has nothing to do, and this bishop's probably going to go to f3 later, and that's going to be annoying. This bishop doesn't really have anything to attack ever, so that's not good. Now, as you all know, in the positions where white has a pawn on e5, I assume they don't know it, so I said that. White's trying to get an initiative, and black's trying to trade all the pieces. Because you know, he doesn't want a knight to go here, for example. That would suck. And even a rook going here would be annoying. Okay, And getting checkmated would be annoying. You know, if the guy like, starts pushing his pawns. So normally black wants to trade queens, and Howell's always in time trouble, so he traded queens. And if I was white, I wouldn't want to trade queens, Although I do like giving my opponent doubled isolated pawns. So, okay, and then a3, obviously, because the pawn's attacked. Obviously. Now we got some tactics. He played here. <clears throat> now white has to be careful about his pawn later. So he played this, and, and black played that. So now all the pieces are hanging, confusing the audience. Yeah. This is a very Karpovian move that he plays here. You guys are analyzing all kinds of captures and moving the bishop, and he went here. And basically, we're going to get an end game if you take my bishop, where either my knight gets here, which we were talking about, or my rook gets here, and your pawns are still doubled and isolated. So for example, if you take, the way to stop knight c4 to d6 is bishop to d5, and the way to stop rook c7 is bishop c6. But obviously you can't play both. And in fact, even if you if you don't let me play here and take, I don't like the looks of those guys. That doesn't look good. That looks like like if I go here, you're not going to be happy. Yeah. You play rook a6, your rook's on a6 the rest of the game. That's not good. So these endings are all better for white. So he played bishop d5 because his knight's pretty good on d4. Bishop d3, he wants to trade somewhere. And this is just bad for black because there's basically no compensation for these pawns. Just doubled and isolated. So counterplay. Although, where's the counterplay? Probably he wants to attack this pawn later, and so f4 would defend it. So he stops f4. And maybe he could play rook a5 and take it later. Maybe. I doubt it. <coughs> takes. Rook takes. Hey, he did what I said. Yeah, played rook a5. Rook d5, rook d7. See, if you guys came in the lecture now, you would have thought rook d7, rook d8, but he played this way, confusing you. Yeah. <coughs> Always play bishop f1. Good square for the bishop. Bishop controls every square. It stops back rank mate and defends the king side from the non... non there's no attack there, but defends it. Now, I'm guessing... <laughs> The computer's going to like white a lot because white has a bishop against the knight and they like those. And I'm also guessing something that makes no sense. And I can't actually know unless I see David Howell again. I saw David Howell in St. Louis. He won one of the GM tournaments they had there. And there was a lot of good players there. And he won. He won one of the games in like 145 moves. He needed three score sheets. I remember. That was a long game. And it was a drawn end game that he won. And who was he? He was playing a kid. He was playing... Who's the Texas kid who's not Jeffrey Zhang? Uh, Lee. Lee? Lou? 
Lee. His brother's, his sister's Rachel. Rachel, and she's 1800, she's like nine. What's his name? Ru Feng Lee, yes. No, no, the, you should see them, like what? Ru Feng Lee's like 2650, you never heard of him? He's a kid in Texas, come on. Anyway, Ru Feng Lee lost in like a thousand moves to Howell, too bad. Okay, now I'm guessing it's gonna like white, but it, exactly, but it's not gonna like white that much, maybe like 0.3, that's my guess. He likes black. That surprises me. I need I need your engine. Yeah. So it just says it's equal. Yeah. Anyway, the, the, what I was going to tell you, not that it likes white or black, I'm guessing Howell is playing for a win. Howell is like, I might be better, I might be worse, but I'm higher rated in my points a kid, so I'm going to win an end game. And the problem with that thinking in this particular case is that's what Pragda Nanda likes. He likes the end game. He likes boring, you know, positional play. Okay, king g2, obviously, breaking the pin. Bishop d3, stopping the other rook from going to d2 or d1. h4, you got to take that. So he just got tricked here. h4 is just he got tricked. So I think g takes h4 is a mistake. I think it's a bad mistake. I'm trying to figure out why he made a bad move like that. If it's move 31, he's in terrible time trouble. Like... I know David Howell. He's in really bad time trouble here. But G takes H4 just seems like a blunder to me. Do you see G takes H4 as one of the suggested moves? Yeah, see the red light? He just, he missed it. He missed plus it. One. He missed it. No, he didn't see. He, see, when you guys are plus one, you're up a pawn. A plus one. When these guys are plus one, a move was made they didn't see. And they couldn't go to the party because there was no plus one. Okay, so after takes, he thought, why would it take back? But he played rook g4 check, and bishop takes f5, he missed that. Yeah. Because white doesn't really have a threat here. You can take on g5, I'll take back. So this is just a blunder. And I told my students, always look for checks and captures. He didn't see this check. Because if he saw that, he wouldn't have done this. And it's his fault, because he's always in terrible time trouble. So he always makes a move between move 30 and 40 that he wouldn't have made if he had time on his clock. Yeah, this is, you can't have a worse pawn structure, or can you? That's pretty bad pawn structure for black. Triple, double, triple pawn. No, no, it's pretty bad. Double, double pawn. Yeah. Okay, and Pragda has like, I'll take all five of your pawns, and he did. Man, the truth hurts. Always repeat, good job, Pragda good job. That's funny, he wants him to take and isolate his pawn, because that's a passed pawn. Two passed pawns, yeah. What would Val Kilmer say? I got two passed pawns, one for each of you. No, tombstone, no. nothing. No. <sighs> Audience. Okay, so rook b3, rook c4, nice, x-ray, yeah? Complicated, are you confused? Mm -hmm. You should be. It's like a pickle in baseball. Yeah, sort of like that, yeah. Look here. Uh-oh. And he lost all it. Never play F6. And he lost all of his pawns. And rookie two. And your king's cut off. And if you ever trade rooks, you will lose. So your king's cut off forever. Now, when it's one against zero, like let's take off this pawn and this pawn. So it's one against zero. Then sometimes you do trade rooks, and the king of pawn versus king is a draw. And if he doesn't trade rooks, your king comes over. That's the drawing method. But that method doesn't exist here because the two always beats the one. So that means your king never goes over. That means you lose. He knew that. So he played f4 because you got to play for tricks. Right? Does white want to trade pawns? I don't think so. G4. Matt Larson style. Yeah. Now black's threatening f3. Never too late to lose. And the F, F4 pawn, and you can't defend it. So, yeah. You can try to defend it, but... Yeah. He takes it. Yeah. If he doesn't play rook b8, black, black, white plays rook a5 check, king e4, and takes the pawn. So, plus 9, that's my guess. I'm serious, too, with the plus 9. Because white is a pawn up. Right? So you, you would have thought plus nine if he was a pawn up, right? Yeah. Depth 32, what's your depth get to? Like, it's the best ever. 
Oh, the best ever, 60, 61, when I let it run overnight or... Nice. This will get to 39 and give up? Maybe. Well, you got the multi-PV on three, which is slowing it down by a factor of three. Wait, what did I do? So you see it's showing you the top three. Oh, yeah, you always do that. Yeah, 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 I, that yeah I, I apologize. It'll, it'll yeah. go deeper faster. Yeah, I'm scared. Yeah, every, everybody I know who's good at chess uses one, and the weaker you are, the more you use. And I use three, so I must be pretty weak. Yeah. I mean, two is reasonable. Three is sort of crazy. Yeah. Depends on what you're doing. Yeah, two is, yeah. Okay, see, so obviously it'll be plus nine if it thinks long enough. Yeah, yeah it'll find mate if it thinks long enough. Here? This will or yours will? <laughs> mine will. Would mine? <laughs> no. Yeah, leave it for a couple days, maybe. Oh, yeah? yeah. Find mate? Man. Right, because, you know, G8 equals queen is coming at some point, right? So. Yeah, it's like mate in 30 here. I don't yeah. know if you can see 30. So maybe. So get to depth 60. Whew. So leave mine mm -hmm. for a couple days. Harsh. Okay, so he wins the two. Now, there's a famous game Steinitz won against probably Zuckertort, probably. I think so, where he had rook and two versus rook. But his two pawns were H and G. That's the worst. Okay, when you have G and F, then white's king can go everywhere. This is great. When it's just H and G, your king, there's no I file. There should be. So this is very easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's so easy. Well, king D4 is insane. Well, in fact, this is a table-based position, so you can just look it up. Right. No, I meant for a person playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah obviously. Yeah. No, I meant with the computer, right? The computer yeah. Find the yeah, this is six pieces. That's a joke. Yeah. yeah. I've never been so mad. Um, do they have all seven pieces, all of them? With all, 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 everything? You know, not like, you know, king, knight, knight, knight versus king, king or whatever. Potters. You know what table bases are? You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whore. I know you do. I'm mm -hmm. going to salt you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, he resigned here. All the interesting ones. Yeah. But it's funny because it's sort of an equal ending and he'd be 2,700. Usually it's his other way around, English. Yeah. Which is funny because he's English. No, usually. That's how you beat little kids. You get a draw an ending and then you beat them. And here was the other way around, which is crazy. Yeah, G takes H4 was crazy. It must have been time trouble because after root G4 check, he's probably losing. Just one bad move. And that game, Prague did not have played the same strength as his opponent and then his opponent blundered. Usually, this is how I beat everybody. I play worse than them, then they blunder when they're slightly better. Than yeah. And that's a weird thing about him because... You know, 12-year-olds who were good, especially like, you know, in Atlanta over here, like the kids who are good here, they sack all their pieces and a lot of theory. That's normal. And probably not how plays the most boring line and moves around, does nothing, and still beats good players. And that's why he's going to be good. When I say good, I mean good, good, because that's how you play eventually anyway, but he's already doing it. So, like, Nakamura obviously played insane. And then the last five years, Nakamura is drawing all his games. That's how you do it, right? And people who don't give up the insane, Shirov, Morozevich, Joe Bava, what, what happened to their ratings? Richard Report. Richard Report is interesting because he's still over 2,700, but I mean, if he wants to be, t he should be top 10 in the world because he was 2,700 when he was like 18. But now he's like 21 and he's 2,700 because he played crazy. So. Rogdan Anha never plays crazy. He plays like slow, methodical, and obviously he's not as good as, you know, top 10 players in the world, but he's 12. So. He plays like Karpov, right? Yeah, he plays very boring, slow, methodical, and beats good players doing that. If he could beat a 2,700 player playing like that in five years, that's, you know, pretty encouraging. So, Nihal Saren plays a little more interesting. He's another Indian prodigy who's like 13. And as you all know, you probably are probably said in the class. India is actually sending a real team to the Olympia this year. They've never done that. Well, they did when Anand was no good. So when Anand was like 2,600 feet, he played in the Olympia, but that didn't matter. Because then boards two, three, four were like, you know, you guys, basically. Yeah. So I wish I was kidding. I'm like a little kidding, but I'm not, I'm not kidding that much. Like India could never finish in the top 10 because board two was like me. So it was like Anand, who was pretty good, not the Anand now, and then... <laughs> Then Anand didn't play in the Olympiads, and neither does Carlson, because you get beaten in the Olympiads. It's harsh. When you get beaten in the Olympiads, you lose rating points, because you're playing Rufus and Doofus, right? When you're not playing in the Olympiad, you have a wood, chess set, electronic, you wear a suit, you get paid millions. When you play in the Olympiad, you're like scrunched up with your teammates, and you got like a plastic set, and there's a million people in the room, and you're nobody. So those guys aren't used to that. So Carlson and Anand don't play in the Olympiad. The next Olympiad, they're both playing. Right. So, and a non, not only is a non playing, so is the rest of the team. 
That's a good team. Vidit's really good. It's like 27.30. Hare Krishna's okay. He's like 27.40. Yeah. Anand's pretty good. And then the guy who plays in Vikanze every year, what's yeah, his name? Okay. What's that? Yeah, that's his name. It starts with an A. Long name, yeah. Starting with a. Long name doesn't help. That's everything. So the AW, right? Uh, he's something. Anyway, he's 26, 80. And there's another guy who's like 2,700. So they've got, I mean, India's going to be serious yeah, for the first time. Because when Anand was playing and he was good, the rest of the team was terrible. Um, in fact, Shashi Kiran used to be good, and now he probably won't make the team. Who's going to be on Carlson's team? With no, that's Norway now. No, it'll be it'll be him. I mean, assuming they play, assuming it'll be Carlson, right. Tari will be board two probably, or Hammer. Unclear. They're about the same. And then maybe Agdestein, but he's like 100 years old. But maybe him anyway. Yeah, that's no, that team after board one is no good. Yeah, they got board one's good, Carlson. Then it's no good. Then it's like 2,600 players. So, like, Russia beats them, the Ukraine beats them, the U.S. beats them, India beats them. They, they can't compete. Yeah. They just have a good board one. But um, India can compete. And those other countries, Azerbaijan, a lot of countries, Armenia. China. China. Yeah. All, I mean, China's got 2,700s on every board. Gonna they got five 2,700s. And then they have extra 2,700s in case they're sick. No, they have all 2,700s, China, all of them. Yeah, and then, like, and then Norway has none of them. Norway has a 2,800 and 2,600. Yeah. No, they can't compete because boards 2, 3, and 4 just get pounded eventually. China, Russia, the yeah. U.S. And, and usually Carlson's playing doofuses every round because Norway's playing some doofus country. Because Norway, Carlson wins and their boards draw and then they play some doofus country. So like, Carlson's playing like me. Horrible. Yeah. As you all know, Pascal Charbonneau, who you never heard of. Wow, none of them heard Pascal Charbonneau. He was the... Uh, Second best player in Canada, maybe, for years. Now he's a stock guy in New York. Um, he's a grandmaster. He beat Anand to the Olympiad. I think that was Anand's last Olympiad. And he, you haven't heard of him. That's Now you understand. Yeah. Because in Olympiad, you know, it's, anybody can beat anybody. And if you're Anand and you lose to Karyaka, and you're like, oh, well. But if you lose to 2,500, that's not good. I mean, you go from number 10 level to number 20, and then nobody invites you. So those guys avoid the Olympiad. Because you can easily lose 20 rating points. Easy. Hard to lose 20 rating points by people your own rating. You have to just play horrible. Which they do occasionally. But Carlson does it. Okay, so go Pragnananta. So in five years, when you come back for the lecture, then Pragnananta has played for World Championship with Wesley So. So there you go. Yeah? Sound good? Possible? No? What's that? Some very long games. Yeah, who's, who's more likely in five years to play for World Championship? So or Pragnananta? Probably So. So. Yeah, because probably not in five years won't be. Uh, he'll be he'll be twenty seven hundred feet day, but he won't be world champion. Yeah, he'll be seventeen. Yeah, still strong. Man, because Kasparov at seventeen is pretty good. So was Carlson.